Okay, welcome to a short series of videos looking at aspects of information failure in markets. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about the used vehicle market. This is a good example of what economists call asymmetric information. Uh, well, what is asymmetric information? It's when there is an asymmetry or an imbalance of information. It happens when somebody knows more than somebody else in the market. Sometimes the buyer knows more than the seller about a product. Uh, other times uh, the seller has better information than the potential buyer. And there is a very, very famous study of the market for used cars uh, written by an economist, George Akerlof. It was the market for lemons. Now, this paper was 1976, very, very famous paper. Uh, he was awarded the Nobel Prize with Akerlof in 2001 for his paper, The Market for Lemons. Actually, it might have been 1970, it's even older. And this looked at the second-hand car market and investigated the problem of the big gap or the information imbalance between buyers and sellers. We'll, we'll talk through how this information fairly can lead to the collapse of prices in a market. Indeed, under certain circumstances, it can lead to what's called a no-trade equilibrium. Literally, people are not willing to trade second-hand cars at all. And then we'll think about what can be done to overcome information failures in the market for used cars and other used products. If you think about what influences your decision to buy a used car from a particular dealer, here's some evidence from the UK back in 2016. And this is basically saying, you know, what influenced your decision to buy a particular used car from a specific dealer? And it turns out the biggest factors tend to be trying to find the right car at the best possible price, good deal on the car, local and convenient dealer, actually knowing your dealer is important. If it's local, you can very go easy, go back easily to complain. The ability to trade in your old car. And crucially, reputation. You've bought a used car from them before, and I've put that in orange. De dealer reliable and trustworthy, wide choice of vehicles, and so on. But of course, when you're buying a used car, uh, there's a big issue, the big uncertainty. How good is the car you're buying? Now, in this market, sellers are assumed to know more about the quality of used vehicles and the potential buyer. They have information about the service history, the mileage, uh, the escapades the car has got up to. And in this theory by Akerlof, the buyer cannot tell accurately and quickly and easily the quality of cars available for sale. They will have an, a an, an asymmetric information. The buyer can't tell the quality of the car. The buyer will typically offer an average price for all the cars they see in the market. And this average price is typically lower than the seller's perceived value, especially if you've got a good car. You, know, you think a, a car is worth £12,000, so a nearly new car. The average price being offered is, let's say, £8,000. You know, the price is lower than your, what you'd be willing to sell it for. That low price strips away your producer surplus. As a result, some sellers will remove their good vehicles, so-called plums or peaches. They'll take them off the market uh, because they're not getting a good enough price. And as a result, the average quality of cars left in the market goes down. The ratio of, of lemons to peaches, or the ratio of lemons to plums, increases. The result is that buyers in a market dominated by dud vehicles may no longer be willing to buy at average prices. And this actually increases the risk of the market disappearing completely. We call that a no-trade equilibrium. And this is the essence of the Akerlof theory of lemons, the market for used vehicles. And if you want to look at the math, which is pretty elegant, take a look at his paper, which is available to download on the internet. So how would you overcome this information problem? What stops the market for used vehicles collapsing because of a loss of trust and reputation? Well, the key thing, of course, is to improve information. The key thing is to address the information asymmetries. And it's important to lower the risk for a buyer in a used vehicle or used product market. Here are some examples that my students came up with when we, when we posed this question. Uh, some suggested you should offer extended test drives for potential buyers, not just 10, 15 minutes around the block, but give them the weekend, for example, to test the car or the vehicle properly. Perhaps you might make it the law, mandatory, uh, that the, uh, the seller provides a full service history, including MOT test logs. Uh, you can extend car warranties to reduce the risk of purchase, the ability 
to have uh, repairs under warranty, for example. Uh, you might insist that the vehicle is independently checked, uh, hundreds of tests, diagnostic tests on the car, by a third party. Not the buyer, not the seller, but a third party comes in and checks the vehicles. And many used car sellers now do that. You might in introduce a mandatory uh, a cooling-off period. So you give uh, people 7 or 14 days to take the product back, and that's to help avoid buyer, re buyer remorse. Extensive pre-purchase diagnostic testing by the dealer using their own skilled mechanics. Many major car manufacturers have a used car setup which does that. And increasingly, you might want to think about using social media. Uh, things like using the kind of TripAdvisor and uh, customer review platforms to help improve the trust between buyers and sellers. So the used car market is a really good example of asymmetric information and it's quite interesting to think of ways in which you can get around that, that problem, the imbalance in information between buyer and seller.